Repairing some parts that were damaged in the post. I recently sold a Stuart triple expansion engine. It was very well packaged in a box. I sent it by Royal Mail next day special delivery. But it arrived the day after it was supposed to and was damaged. In this video I show the damage and how I repaired the parts. This is the hand wheel that you wind to reverse the engine. But this one's not as it should be. The shaft that supports the wheel is bent and the handle is very bent. It would appear that this package has had some incompetent handling. This is the engine's wooden base with a steel insert. And believe it or not, the rings that you can see in the metal part were made by a brass fitting. So it would appear that quite a lot of weight was put on top of this parcel to allow this to happen in the first place. It's no good crying over spilt milk as the phrase goes. I spoke to the new owner and I just requested the return of the parts that were damaged and I would repair them. And sure enough, a few days later, these parts arrived in a jiffy bag. I sold this Stuart triple expansion engine as a rebuild project. I just didn't think that I would be the one that started the project rolling. Here are the parts in question. You can see the handle is bent and the main shaft is also bent. I definitely can't repair the handle because I can actually see a crack in the metal. But I will show the process for repairing a bent handle like this if it hadn't been cracked. The main shaft that supports the hand wheel on these engines is quite thin. And it's a good job too, the way this parcel's been handled. I fitted the part in the chuck of the Myford. Myfords are great for jobs like this because the chuck jaws from front to back are quite narrow. Here's the shaft in the chuck jaws and I'm going to straighten it. There are no discernible cracks in this part and before I attempt to straighten it I'm going to heat it up with a blowtorch. This is a very simple job but please bear in mind the shaft itself is very thin indeed. So I can't really use any brute force, I'm going to have to be careful. To heat the part, and I don't really need to take it to red heat, I'll be using my Proxon blowtorch. I'm also going to use this copper-faced hammer, but I'm going to use it very, very carefully. It's far too big and heavy for a job like this. The first thing to do is to heat up the piece of metal. And using this excellent Proxon blowtorch, even though it's very small, soon started to heat the part. You can see the band of heat moving down the shaft. After a while, I tried a few very gentle taps with the hammer. And slowly but surely, it started to straighten. Normally, I would spin up the lathe and tap any part to straighten it whilst it was spinning, but this is not a good idea with such a small part. I got the shaft as close as I could, and here's something that you should not do. This is actually dangerous. I'm using a piece of Scotch Brite. The problem is, when the lathe spins, the thread pulls the Scotch Brite and my fingers towards the chuck. It's a better idea to just rotate the Scotch Brite with the chuck stationary. I got the part about 90% true with this method. Here I'm fitting the bearing, followed by screwing the wheel onto the shaft and tightening the nut. Please note you must not do this. Once the wheel is fastened to the shaft, the use of a soft hammer of this weight is totally out of the question. And it doesn't matter if you turn it round and use the hide face. I use my fingers and my calibrated eye and now the part spins perfectly. Part one of the job is now complete. This next part of the job is a total waste of time. I'm showing it though because if the handle wasn't quite as badly bent as it is, I could straighten it using this method. I'm drilling a hole in a piece of brass and threading it 5BA. Once this part of the job was completed, I put the piece of brass in my vise and tightened it up. I fitted a steel washer underneath the part to support it and as before, I'm using my Proxon blowtorch to heat the part up. If you look carefully at this part, you will clearly see there is a crack between the handle and the boss. But if there hadn't have been a crack, it would have been feasible to fix it this way. But alas, however gently I touched it with the hammer, I felt it move. This part, unfortunately, is scrap. At this stage I could remove the broken part with my fingers, but remember it's very hot, so instead I used a pair of pliers. And literally, as soon as I gripped the part, owing to the fact that it was fractured, the handle came away from the boss. 
How am I going to fix this? Well, I'm not. At the moment, I'm removing the boss from the piece of brass. What I'm going to do is remanufacture this part. But first I need to take some measurements. The diameter of the boss, so it fits in the machine part of the handwheel. And then the length of the handle itself, which is three quarters of an inch. Over now to my Boxford lathe, and I'm going to speed up this process because it's a very simple job. I machined the end of the bar so it could be threaded 5BA, and here I'm doing just that, using one of my homemade tailstock adapters to keep the die in line with the work. The rest of the turning operation is done 100% freehand, and my tool of choice for this job is a parting tool. I'm using what I would term the Etch-a-Sketch method. It's a bit like a human-powered CNC machine. I turn both of the handles at the same time. There are many different ways of turning tapers, but for this job, the manual method seems to be working quite well. If you're not very experienced doing this sort of thing, I would suggest practicing on a piece of scrap metal. I've done similar jobs to this hundreds of times over the years, and it's quite simple once you know how to do it. The part's been turned to the right shape, it just needs cleaning up. Starting with a needle file, you will notice that I've pulled the part out of the chuck so that my hands and the needle file are not too close to the chuck itself. After using a piece of emery cloth, followed by wet or dry sandpaper, this is the finish I got on the handle. In this clip, I'm parting off the finished handle, but I'm not going straight across with the parting tool. I'm using the Etch-a-Sketch method once again by rotating both handles simultaneously. And now it's top tip time. I've taken a great deal of trouble to get a good finish on this handle, and I don't want to mark it by using a pair of pliers to screw it into the hand wheel. So first of all, I put a new piece of Scotch-Brite around the handle. Then I grip the Scotch-Brite with the pliers and rotate the whole thing. Now the handle is firmly attached to the hand wheel without any marks that would have been made by the pliers. You can also use a piece of copper tube for this. It does the same sort of thing, but it doesn't grip quite as well as the Scotch-Brite. This is the new handle that I made, and now, in a flashback, I can engage smug mode knowing that my handle is better than this one. In this very close-up close-up, you can see things that I never noticed, for instance the burrs around the edges of the holes drilled in the hand wheel. Here's a finished part on the bench, and next to it is a piece of packing material. I used quite a lot of this stuff in the package when I posted the engine to the new owner. Just in case you're puzzled by this clip, it has nothing to do with religion. It's going to make sure that the part arrives at the destination without any damage. The part is a push fit into the foam, then I cut two other pieces for the top and bottom, making a groove in the other pieces so that the part was not under any stress whatsoever. To secure these two parts to the central middle bit, I used two lengths of sellotape, so I don't think this is going anywhere, and it should arrive in one piece. Especially when the entire thing is wrapped in bubble wrap and placed in a much larger cardboard box. Tomorrow I will take it to the same post office where I posted the first parcel, and complain about the incompetence of the Royal Mail Special Delivery Service. That's it for this one, the part is repaired. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.